Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Over. And I'm Ring Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, today we promise you some more action between Ort and Gram Slam, and we aim to deliver. We are today on Horoshisha, so what are both these two guys bringing to the fray? Well, on the left hand side, in the blue, we have ourselves Gram Slam playing as Panzer Grenadier Division Feldenhalle. And on the right hand side, in red, we have Ort. Playing as 85th Infantry. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, forgive me for the people who are watching my side of this thing. I was just so focused on the Kattenkrad, just because I love seeing a little you know, rinky dink transportation vehicle. It's like somebody took a go kart and a half track and made them half loaf, and, and, and <laughs> thus the Kattenkrad was born. <laughs> Must um, be really but, fun to drive. Yeah, you know, like I'm kind of jealous when they did that for Saving Private Ryan. Um, yes, they used a Kattenkrad in there. Um, but kind of fascinated to see how this is going to work between Feldhardenhalle and the 85th. Now, Feldhardenhalle, I don't, we don't see very much. This is a Red Storm division, so what the heck do we expect here? Uh, they're very similar to 17th SS. You've got some light armor, lots of Panzergrundeers. They have a decent amount of tanks, almost enough tanks where I justify it being a tank division, but it's just a handful of Stugs and Panzer Fours here and there. But apart from that, pretty standard Panzer Grenadier Division stuff. 85th is also not bad. Lots of infantry, lots of self-propelled guns, and the SU 85s are really the 85 division with all the SU 85s. But yeah, I'm expecting a bloodbath in the town and everything else being a little bit more cried, which is usually how this map plays out. And, you know, and, and looking at this early on here, one thing that we didn't see a whole lot of on Tuesday was Specialist Infantry, and we're not going to see a whole lot of early over here either from Fulltornhalle. In fact, taking a look at their deck, I don't think we're going to see a ton of just Specialist Infantry really overall. We will see some over from, um, from the Russians, but we'll get to them in due time. Um, light armor, worthwhile in this town fight, or is this just a mistake? Uh, I think it's definitely going to be Royal Thrall and just dealing with, like, Stroll Keys and other infantry. Of course, the T-34s are going to be a pain, but that's what Stugs are for. He just needs to position himself where he can't get shot by said T-34. I also find it kind of amusing, amusing uh, down to the south of C-8, PTRS squad making an end run, and the Panzer Strikes are going to be none the wiser. So, wait to see some, let's say, uh, frustration kills happen a little bit later down the road. <laughs> That's pretty much how you play Red Storm, is sneaking anti-tank rifles behind enemy lines and harassing the hell out of them. Certainly seems to be the case. Uh, to the north, of course, we do see a couple of veteran Ultima Cheekies. We, didn't, we don't see these kind of tags too often. It's just the plus 10 accuracy, 15 rate of fire, and the stress resilience there. Um, very, probably, smart thing to kind of push these guys very quickly into the forest, because they are ridiculously deadly up close. All the nine shot, uh, PP shots that they've got gonna they just are, turn make mincemeat yes sir they are indeed pretty deadly but we do have quite a few pines of pioneers on the other side as well and they can just need to get a good uh chat or charge off or two and those ultimate cheekies are going to be in for a nasty time but yes that's the interest in seeing someone actually push up north at least is trying to hold on to the tip of that forest it means a very good position to just try and contest it's usually hard to fully capture up north from orch side but if he, you know, deploys some more CQC infantry, he can definitely prove to be a pain in the ass. And that's the other way that you want to be playing a lot of Red Storm games, is how much of a pain in the ass can you be? And, you know, as the, can you prevent your own ass from being pained in the meantime? That's um, a pretty accurate description of how to play Red Storm, Khan. And how to play most games, I feel like. In fact, that's pretty much how I live my life. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's leave my relationships out of it for right now. Um... We are going to see Strokies over here in the middle town being pushed back a little bit. Nothing too crazy. We are going to see that meeting engagement, though, too. And I I don't know. I, I don't really like... I think we're going to see some decent casualties being suffered by the Pioneers, at minimum. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get the grenades off. Yeah, there we go. That's going to stress them out. That went a lot better than I expected it was going to. Wow. Yeah, when you have, like, like if it's just, like, one satchel charge troop, it usually doesn't work out too well, but the exponentially become deadlier the more you get, because two or three satchel charges is enough to pin down anybody. 
as you can see, the Strokey Comrade is not wanting to have any of that and is going to bugger off. But no, even, even so, even without the charge going off, you see that these two squads, you know, three squads, concentrating their firepower, I didn't think it was quite that deadly in the forest. That's It's always such a surprise to see. Indeed. Yeah, indeed it is, and that's pretty much going to secure the hill out for Graham, so that should prove to be a bit of a relief for the time being, so he can focus on the town. He's doing pretty good in the town. He has a whole heap of Panzergrundeers, much more than the Shrokies, which, yeah, and he has men to get into mostly better positions in that town fight so far. The one thing I'm a little bit nervous about, though, is that we're not seeing a lot of artillery. Maybe it's because both these guys are artillery out. We definitely saw a lot of it over here on Tuesday, and if you don't know what we're talking about, it really is worth a checkout or two. Um, mm -hmm. It was a blast. Oh my gosh, was it a blast? It was a blast indeed. But yeah, both sides definitely focusing more on off-map artillery of their divisions, not a whole heap really in terms of the artillery tab. We got some support guns for Autia with the 76 mils and some grills for Graham, but that's really about it when it comes to on-map artillery pieces. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do see in the north of it the most heavily armed piece of that light recon platoon, let's call it, gets taken out, I think, courtesy of that SU-85 in the distance there. Um, but they do manage to push back with the PTRSs for the time being. Yeah, stopping any pain in the arses from happening in the arses of Graham's line. Indeed. The grill is starting to kind of go and try to barbecue some of those strokies in that town. Um, and th that thing is really quite scary. Uh, un unfortunately, the grill is not known for its fine-toothed kind of accuracy. No, uh, but to be fair, when you have 150 millimeters of high explosive, I think no one's really going to argue with how accurate it is. Unless, of course, you're the PDI who's got to go in after you shell the area. But yeah. that, that's a... But I just speaking know. about this mod, I really do love how, like, like self-propelled guns like the grill are handled in this mod. Because in vanilla, you'd never see it because it can only shoot directly. And by God, it's pretty terrible in that regard that it gets killed too easily. But here, you can actually use it as an artillery gun because it is a, technically a big-ass artillery gun. And you don't have to expose your sorry ass to the enemy anti-tank. This is certainly the idea. To the north, we did see SU-85 engage one of the, uh, one of a pair of Stugs, and did get a kill there. Consistently, the T-70s trying to go and push back another Stug. Did pretty well on that, and the Krosa continues just to pound that town, going to pound town. Yeah, it's um, just. Yes, please. Both sides are setting up a pretty defensive line in that town. Like, neither one really, you know, moving out all the infantry and doing a concise, concise push. I'm going to bet that they're going to rate for off-map artillery before doing that, which would be the smart move. Yeah, but, you know, I think every now and again, I mean, that's exactly what the enemy is going to prepare, you know, but, like, get ready to do. So maybe what you do is you surprise the old chap and you do it without that. Or you do a surprise push down south. I, I do love how the PTRS escorts in that uh, building there. It's going to get some very nice snipes. And I think we're going to see some reinforcements coming in down south eventually. As Orsi is starting to maneuver a little bit. Getting some veteran strokies. And actually capturing the flag. Because there's not a whole lot of frontline coverage units yet. No there is not. And to the north we're going to see a rather tentative push. As a T-70 goes up and sacrifices himself upon the altar of communism. Um, as his Panther Shrek, if he doesn't kill him, I would be exceedingly surprised in all the worst ways. Yep, there we go. Yeah, yeah free self veterancy, you're like it's illegal to miss at that point. Especially when it's a twenty five ton or a thirty ton tank on the other side of it, yeah. 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 But regardless, we are gonna see the grills I think are slowly trying to rotate a little bit further south. Still trying to hit that town. Still gonna be doing very little about it. I think it's quite curious that we're not seeing some crazy kind of investment of troops, or just more arty, I guess. From, um, Ort's side? Honestly, from both sides, but Ort for sure. I mean, looking at Ort's entire deck, he's got 76s, he's got 122s, heck, he can even call in some air power here, and just some really, really efficient 
I think, striking, but that doesn't seem to be, you know, highest priority list right now. Well, to be fair, a lot of that is coming out into B phase, so he doesn't have a whole lot of our artillery currently. But I think he's actually starting to gear up more for push down south, actually rushing up a T-34 and sacrificing it to two panzer strikes from a lovely ambush position there. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Horse is pretty happy in just defending the central town. And just trying to make some skirmish happen down south. Because that skirmish down south, capping that flag, has given him that plus one point advantage. That's true. That That is true. I will grant you that. I think the thing that's, that's surprising for me is that, yes, while things are coming in B-phase, I'm not going to deny that. I, I guess I'm just surprised that we're not seeing a more explosive beginning here yes we've seen a couple of deaths here and there but i'm surprised by how i guess meager and how tentative the first steps have been from both sides yeah i mean both of them also have like the higher income coming into being or it's definitely gonna have the better attrition coming into c phase of course but uh yeah it's actually quite surprising because usually when we see i mean this is like it's essentially like the third place match of the tournament you see like crazy of Defensive half track rushes and maneuvers, but both sides have been playing more defensive divisions in these matches, and we're seeing, you know, pretty good defensive play, but it is, of course, rather slow. Now, unfortunately, over here for the Luftwaffe, they have just lost two of their own. And the fact, we have oh. a triple laugh being called on, and I mean, surprised by that, to be sure, but really, really well done. Taking out both a BF-109 as well as one of those very, very valuable Stukas. Yeah. And while the town fight is heating up, so is the push down to the south. Vehicles are a bit of a liability, but those PP Shahs are definitely not. Yeah, if not many uh, pioneers down there, after Machikis can have a lovely time just gunning down the Germans with all their SMGs. We've got two Zis guns being brought in to help... Uh, Fender line, and this is great because the LP TRS is all he's going to be able to delay reinforcements for at least a few minutes, I think, if he gets some good snipes. Well, it's at least he'll force his first layer of troops to pop on out. Yeah, it's free PTRS, so it's just I hope he like turns off the hold fire and just starts unloading into these guys. Uh, I do too. I actually, I kind of wish he, oh, yep, he's aiming at least. Um, maybe it's efficient fire. Maybe he's got efficient fire turned on. I think it's hold fire, so it's not going to shoot until he's spotted. Yikes! There we go. Two, two, two goes down. It's going to force the unloads on the flam pioneers and then run away, which is honestly not bad because those guys are going to have to now walk to the front line. So the PTRS did its job. He absolutely did. I mean, it could have been even more skillfully accomplished. I think we can both kind of note that there. Yeah, probably shot a little bit sooner, I believe. Yeah, he would have had a bit of a range advantage against those flam pioneers. But, but that's still, just being nitpicky. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's still it's pretty damn good. I mean, those flam pioneers are gonna take like yeah, like a minute or two to actually get to the front line, and this is gonna allow Ort to deploy his his free gun. And get more infantry up here to actually defend our flag. And he is going to deploy very aggressively with them. And yep, infantry is going to be placed to the south. Yeah, okay, so potentially they might run into him, but less of the PTRS actually might even be able to survive by just scampering further and further to the south. Yeah, and actually, Jeez. I mean, Graham Eva has two options. She can move up his pioneers to actually try and clear out, or to actually counter-attack, or he could try to use them to hunt down the PTRS, and I feel like he's, yeah, he's just gonna go to the front line, so, well, it's PTRS, it's, it's like a sneaking mission in uh, Metal Gear Solid, you just have to oh, rate for a little bit, rate for the alert, the, the alert timer to go down, and he can go back into the town and snipe some more fools. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um... I mean, because just like that, I mean, eventually, I would think that uh, Graham Slam's going to take one, one look at that and be like, hmm, guess he's gone now. And, you know... <laughs> he's footprint sees. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and Orch guys can come right back outside of underneath that little cardboard box. So, I mean, they're, they're not really a zinky boy going on here. And, yeah. geez, yep, the front line has folded. So here's this, this gun is going to deploy and it's going to be awful to approach against. 
And Graham has to put in a marker on the S-85, which I'm guessing he's going to bomb it. That's just what I would do if I put a marker on the S-85, yeah. And that's he going to be deploying, or Autist is going to be deploying his s in a pretty good forward position here. That will cover this open field. In this, though, I would go and wait and turn off my, you know, turn hold fire on it for most of it. I mean, the HE is good, but you don't have it here to be HE. That's why you have all this, all this attendant infantry. Yeah. I think it's pretty good for HC fire support, really. So I see against Pantagrind is at long range, you're going to need to extra firepower, because your stroke keys don't really cut it. I think for me it was more the idea of, if I'm going to have it here, I'm kind of want to keep it deployed against that light armor, which would cause a little bit of hassles for my infantry. A oh, fair point. Um, we also to the northern side. Grills continue to, power, uh, to pound the town, but these SU-85s, I mean, just that best been... Rather delicious, jeez. Gotten several kills here. And several very, very necessary criticals at that. Yeah, those girls are pretty nasty, but... I mean, yeah, I mean, apart from the southern flank, this has been... Very, very defensive. I mean, Ors has barely moved from his line since the start of the match. And the same thing with Graham. You know, he has means to get into the better frontline position across the road of all his troops. And holy crap. Soviet Air Force is not messing about today. And no, they are not. And there we go. I mean, four ten goes down. Jeez, that's. I think that's both MU. No, it's not that both ME four tens. This that's that's one of the rocket ones from B. Fortunately, Graham does have a decent amount of air power available, so he can afford to lose some at this time being. But he might want to think about investing in anti-air at some point. Regrettably, he did. Um. It's just that it just got rocketed into oblivion. Mm -hmm. So he's got a couple of two centimeters. I mean, obviously later on he can bring in uh, a couple 88s, but that's not the ideal. The ideal here, of course, is not having to worry about that kind of junk. Yeah. Are you, you know at PTRS Khan? Mm -hmm. He's uh, gearing up, I think, to shoot his Panzer four. Oh, no, he's, yeah, he's in that he's in that house, and... He's going to get side shots, which is, like, beautiful. Well, and he turned off the whole hold fire thing as well, so he's, he's going to get yeah. one shot off. I'm not sure about two. Ah, oh, I know, the, the, the buildings keep blocking line of sight. Ah, oh, what a shame. He really could have got a very rough roll kill here, but that's not going to happen, and... Graham is actually making a pretty decent counterattack now here down south, as his three is getting... Pinned down a bit, and the Pantagrandiers are slowly moving forward. It's not a whole... I mean, the Avdom and Cheekies are a scary CQC, but it's not enough against this many Pantagrins. No. No, not even remotely. I am surprised his Maxims didn't move across the saddle. Oh, but, yeah. Um, he has a lot of stuff still that he could maneuver into the front line, yeah, but I guess he wants to set up a second defensive position just in case, which is a legitimate point, especially in Red Storm. As if you don't have anything in the rear, your front line just collapses, and then you lose all your flags. And you kind of need the flags to win the match. Yeah, you kind of need them. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, tank commander killed over here in the meantime. Is this gun is going to probably open up? Ooh, never mind. He ain't opening up in anybody ever again. Yikes. Yikes, indeed. And, yeah, it's a very good counterattack here from Graham, just... You know, the Panzer Grenadier push, I mean, a very scary infantry with all the bloody machine guns that they have and just enough fire support with the light armor to help them out. And I do want to, forgive me, I want to cut yeah, you off there for a second, go back up to the northern side and see that there is a bit of a firefight, and I say a bit of a firefight developing over here in the town, as just infantry after infantry is just starting to shellack each other. The veteran Pgrens opening up on the stroke east in every direction. And at this point, there is going to be a bit of a quality advantage that's going to be improving over here for the Grand Slam. Add in the fact that we don't really have the same kind of, you know, front-line armor support. We have a couple of SU-85s sniping from the back. But they are dreadfully outnumbered. Indeed they are. And this is really the time where Graham needs to be offensive. Because once we hit into C phase, he does lose out in terms of income. It's not a huge amount, but you might as well try and take advantage right now when he has the income and once he captures his flag down south it will give him the points advantage which he'll desperately need because he's he's losing by quite a bit in terms of points so far and you were asked there you see with the, the flag the sdk have said seven ones you got the two centimeter flag 38s 
those guys right there got to do, you know, basically their true job, which is let me just go in and carve up infantry like crazy. <laughs> yeah. And also, that's terrifying. I, I love... Whenever you stick four guns and slap them together, it makes me very happy. More guns you can slap, the better. Well, I, exactly. Exactly. But, like, nobody cares about ADA until it's like, okay, kill that town. Okay, cool. Great. Let's yeah. do it. Yo, the Ash 85s have been trading pretty efficiently, man, to knock out two Stugs here. And honestly, in terms of the armor, I really have to give it to the 85th, as they definitely has more Ash 85s and later on T-44 85s. Well, Graham only has, like, four cards of tanks, and then, like, some anti-tank, which is mainly just some anti-tank guns, and one card of martyrs. It's not a whole lot. I I have a bit of a... just issue... Ooh, there goes an Ash 85 I have a bit of an issue just overall calling a Stug a tank. I, I know, it's like an assault, assault gun, but... I know, you know. I know, and, and it's it's one of the grips I will always have. Is that it's... It, the tank, if you squint a bit at it, but it's it's not really what you're thinking about there. Yeah, so. the G German commanders who were issued uh, Stugs, essentially were using them as tanks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They didn't have anything else, though, too, so... Like, oh, we're an infantry division here, we finally got armored support, but we're told not to use them like tanks because this is early on in the war where they only had the short 75 mil. You know, for, hey, we can throw them against Soviet armor, referee and counter and we'll be fine, you know, it's a tank, it's armored, it's bulletproof, it's got a gun, but yeah, and it didn't work because it's not really a tank, even though it is, but it's is we're getting way really too much into the region, this still shoots. Can we just say that to kill a, a T-34, it was four Stugs to a T-34 and four <laughs> Stugs to a... <laughs> Which, ergo, de facto oh. means, QED, ipso facto, death traps. There we it, go. There it we was, go. I'm, it, writing, I'm writing a book. Forget it. <laughs> it was 10 pounds of twos for every one KV-1. You know what? There's a part of me that would not be surprised by that. Same here. Um, but regardless, we are seeing some rather risky play back and forth. I don't know that I really believe that the Gram Slam really is, is, is holding too much. I feel like if he's holding the line, other than in this central position, it's, it's only because the Russians have been, well, kind of apathetic with their pushes. Yeah, it's really just coming down to the central position now. I don't feel like we're going to see another push here from Ort down south anytime soon. Yeah, I feel are like he's... Gonna, are we are going to see them? What? PTRS squad. Oh. 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 And he's not on hold fire, so he's going to get some long-range snipes here on these opal blitches. And the Kubov are going to as well, I believe. <laughs> that is absurd. <laughs> It's like an execution squad. It is, except everybody's got a loaded weapon. Yep. Two, two Run away! <laughs> he's, he, he's paid for himself. Alright, yeah, time, time to go, boys. No, no, yeah, flamethrowers. You might want to leave. Flamethrowers beat anti tank rifles. This is rock versus scissors. Yeah, this, this, this isn't like every single one of those World War II games where you fire a PTRS at somebody and he just vanishes in a puff of smoke and flesh. Oh no, I played Call of Duty World at War. The PTRS was a sniper rifle. <laughs> Actually, you're right. I know exactly the, the, yeah. the level you're talking about as well. Yeah. Um, Grills continuing their kind of long term barbecuing, looking for SU 85s here. Um, I get the feeling I'd much rather be using them against the front lines, but we talked about this on Tuesday, so I'm not going to go too far into it. Yeah. I do like how these grills have been constantly firing because I feel like they've been doing pretty good pressure on Orts into the town. I mean, it's just trying to knock out those MVP targets like the Escher 85s, but Orts is starting to build up a pretty decent counter force here, and it's coming down, I think, once again to attrition. I mean, looking at it from Graham's side, he doesn't have a whole lot of tanks. He has like three, four Panzer IVs being brought in, but you've got a bunch of T 34s and Escher 85s, and just three guns in that town now. And really, as town fight, as much as infantry is important, it's a lot of open ground, and having fire support tanks is pretty crucial. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what else is crucial is, is that an anti-air is just ripped off a wing from one of those poor, poor PE2s. Um, but this town, I, I would hazard that this town over here is going to slowly start to become red. 
I think enough Strugs have died. The P4s are just very much outclassed by these SU-85s. I, I would not want to get close. Yes, yeah, this is kind of turning into um, Tuesday's game. Where True. it just came down to long game attrition. And of course, once you go into C phase, I definitely benefit Ward quite a bit. I think that C phase C34 card is going to come in pretty clutch. Same with the SU-85 card. As well, while well, Graham doesn't really have that much, like, he hasn't, like, no C phase armor at all. His division is very much built for that B phase. Well, and, and, Kobrotis, not the Machikis, we have a, you know, would be artillery park being brought on in right now with 76 um, howitzers. Looking for, probably not going to find, but looking for potentially killing that Commandant and maybe engaging the SDKF said anti air. Yeah, I mean, the 76 sixes at long range are frankly terrible. Like, they have no radios, a very inaccurate dispersion rise. I don't think they're really going to do too much. Uh, not sure why he called the rocket plane in and then immediately left, but okay. I want to see these first rounds land. Just I'm, I'm fascinated. There's a, there's a piece of me that's got to know. Okay, fair enough. Yep. Yep. They, 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 they are pretty garbage. Different zip code. There we go. Problems. Now, down to the south, the hero PTRS squad, I think, is going to be pinched out. Unless he gets wise and doubles back to the north? I don't know. I don't right, think PTRS. Karatanov over here is going to be seeing in the dark anytime soon. Um, actually, I want to see... There's, there's a fair chunk of Opal Blitzes, I mean, and we talked about this again also on Tuesday, that a lot of, I think, the effectiveness that we see from some of these divisions is the logistical supply that kind of keeps things so, I don't want to say on even keel, but, you know, that kind of idea here. Mm -hmm. It's funny how he has that many Opal Blitzes, but he only has, like, one actual, yeah, like, one actual on-map artillery, like, card. Like you'd think if you're taking two supply cards, you would take like two or three artillery cards to counter True. it. Like he's not I don't think he's really gonna get the usage out of all those opal blitches, really. Like another I don't, I forgot exactly what uh Felden how to get. I think they get more to half tracks, and those would be definitely a good call in if they do have them. Or mortars in general. I mean me and Khan can't, can't shut up about mortars, you know. Our our general conversations is just talking about mortars off you know, off recording. Well, yeah, you know, it just it, it allows you to really just have like a you know an awesome hat. I mean, you have a stovepipe there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, you get the channel your inner Abe Lincoln, and you know, at the same time, you know, at the end of it, you just kind of burst your top whenever you're looking for it. So, I mean, throw around a few hundred meters. That's, <laughs> and it's more mo more yeah, more mobile than a lot of artillery. So why the heck not? So. Yes, sometimes when we get bored, we usually play catch with a dud eighty-one millimeter mortar shell. I think exactly. it's a dud. <laughs> so so I, far, I'm pretty good at catching them. It's, it's, it's all about cradling the round as it comes in. <laughs> yeah, it's like hot potato. Exactly, except you do not want the potato. No. Uh, Soviet wave coming on in PE2s in every direction. Rocket attacks coming through. Looking for Whoa. and finding some of this ADA. <laughs> You need I, seed aircraft when you have Soviet rocket planes. Well, the mildly amusing thing is that one's got six rockets still, and one's got a full rocket load. Yep, they know where they're, they're, you know where they're aiming. They're going for those other two um, anti-air positions. They're going to get at least one here. 100%. Yeah, I was really deadly if that one rocket strike. Oh, no, no. One's going to be forced to fall back, yeah. You coward. And the other, and the other one retreats as well. You cowards. Yep. You're still seeing these 76 mils being used at long range, which is a, a, a real big misplay. They're not really doing anything as we're clearly seeing. Yeah, but maybe they're using it as an area denial thing. Like, okay, well, yeah, we're shoveling this area. Oh, we better move. And like, clop, 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 it, like into something else instead. I don't know. Potential. But it is still 1311 over here in favor of the Grand Slam. So while Ort has definitely, I think, been more efficient and more effective at using his troops, especially in these last probably 10 minutes or so, um, well, he still has a, a fair bit of area to climb. 
Yeah, it's once again, it's really just coming down to this town. I mean, Orns is calling in a lovely off map bridge to clear out the Pantagon and Deers, and it seems like Graham is starting to really run out of stuff in the center. He doesn't have a whole lot of infantry left. He's bringing in more Panzer Force, which he must be running out of at this point because he'd lost that previous platoon to those SU-85s, and well, it's C phase now. No C-34s are coming in. We got BA-10s coming in now. So, there's still a whole lot of Soviet armor. BA-10s? I mean, I feel like someone was like, Ah, we need a tank. And I was like, well, I already put this cannon on top of my 4x4. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever, let's go. <laughs> it's a very um, odd-looking armored car, because it still looks like something from World War One, like the Rolls-Royce armored yes. car. But, yeah. you know, they got like a T-26 turret on top. I will tell you, one of these things, and this, this goes double for anybody watching this replay as we speak, do yourself a favor and learn all about the great Toyota War. Oh. It, it is a Toyota thon that you have to learn about. It is absolutely amazing. I don't want to ruin it, but um, if anybody looks it up, please reach out to me because I'd love to talk about it. It is so freaking hysterical. Um, that dose double for you there, Rang. Um, but we're going to see in the meantime, P4 is kind of getting, again, trying to push a little bit further forward. So there's still Zissis in the area, though, and I think these Zissis are going to be engaging this 2 centimeter flak and potentially might even take that out, which is going to be a bit of a problem, I think, for some of the infantry positions here in this town. Yeah. I'm just seeing a whole lot of off-map now. I mean, Graham's going to be countering back with a lovely strike, which should get these free Zissis free guns. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's 105, so yeah. Yeah, it's going to be um, pretty nasty, but... Looking at this, I mean, Ord is slowly but surely making progress in the town. He's capturing the flags. He's got the plus one point advantage, and Graham has nothing there. Surely you can't be serious. Don't call me Shirley. There we go. Atta boy. All right, yep, more su 85s being brought on in. Another Strokey squad. Veteran Strokeys as well. Kind of being tossed to the front. And, wait, Smoke Barrage? What? That's an interesting call. I think maybe he ran out of, like, the regular barrage, so he just wanted to shut those three guns up a bit, put them in timeout, and stop him from firing. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing, though, is that timeouts end, and those just barrages don't, so... So, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty nasty once the smoke comes back. And here, well, here's another barrage that's happening in 36 seconds from now. This isn't, yeah, this isn't Willie P. This is just your, I would say, run-of-the-mill smoke for all the, you know, sense of that mix. Mm-hmm. It is a and lot of it. the continue to snipe. The BA-10s are even trying to engage the P-4s. This is really, really strange to watch sometimes. Yeah. The BA-10s are not the best uh, units for fighting frontally. But hey, Graham is doing a desperate attack up north here. I like it. We're finally seeing... Another flank opening up, and this is going pretty well. The Panzer Pioneer's leading the charge. He's got the recon vehicles coming in. And he's got a flag, and he's going to bring it back to a 12 trove. So, will this be enough to maybe deter this southern, or to deter the town push for a little bit? Oh, no, don't worry, we have rocket planes. And thus, the, the, the entire attack was broken. Yeah. Yeah, 222 getting a little bit close, taking in some rather nasty grenade fire. And the T-70 gonna come in around the flank and catch these Panzer Pioneers out in the open here, so... Yeah, I... It seems like this isn't going to last yet long. No, it does not seem like that now, does it? Um... The Pioneer squad's gonna get caught in the open, they're gonna get crushed. I think the only prayer they really have is somehow this minor infantry push kind of pinching out this Strokey Comparati magically see some weird success. And, and I, I don't know if that's still even possible. They're going to kill the officer, that's for sure, and, and, and hats off to him. Um, but there's still just more infantry that's going to get tossed on in. You can see, what, four squads of infantry, no, sorry, three squads of infantry and two BA-10s. There's a Strokey squad that's running point. They're going to take this town, this area for half a second, and then they're going to lose it again. Yeah, that's pretty much what will have enough here to count the outpost. I mean, we're seeing Graham bring an Armada free to try and continue said post, but yeah, it's just not going to really work. I mean, he's got a foothold on the hill, but that's easy to kill T-70, which is quite nice. 
I see him. I don't know. Maybe Graham can at least hold on to his section of the hill. Maybe not get the flag at least, but it'd be something for now. And looking back into the town, I mean, it's actually brought out a pretty decent amount of reinforcements. Actually, resorting to martyrs now as he's probably run out of proper tanks. Yeah, but their proper tanks are just getting sniped one by one by one by one by one. Yeah. Yeah, just looking at the Soviet side, there's a, there's a lot of T-34s and S-35s. And I don't think we're going to see some mad rush forwards. I think we're going to see an airstrike and that will be the sign to kind of push. So you can see right now, we see more Stroke squads being brought on in, in pairs and everything. So my guess we'll see a rocket attack on that one. No, he's going for the northern one first. Okay, that's a better call. Um, Boom! But I'm expecting to see maybe a rocket attack right in the area of those DP Grenadiers. And then one a little bit further to the west while going after that anti-air position. Yeah. That'll be the signal to attack. Yeah, those rocket strikes have been pretty on point, knocking out those high-value targets such as Pack 40s and anti-aircraft guns. And here comes a triple lag attack. Or LA-5 attack, Jeez. I should say. And Jesus, yeah. Jesus, indeed. I mean, they don't have a great armament, only two 20mm cannons per plane, but when you have three planes, it's a decent offensive armament. Exactly. Exactly. Odds are you're going to get quite even. Mm -hmm. um, T-70 starting to engage the martyrs now, and again, martyrs are great when you have stuff screening them. Martyrs are great when you're sitting in ambush. Martyrs are not what you want to be engaging everything else on the front line with. Um... But like you said, if that's all you got, that's all you got to throw in. And that's all he has definitely got for the time being. Check it right down to the south. We go back to a 50-50 in that particular area. But it's a 1410. So we see a couple of cheeky flags being picked up. A PE2. PE2 is going after another pack over here. So also, I mean, geez, this is... It's nearly constant. We're seeing these little, you know, rinky-dink snipes back and forth. That's going to be a dead pack. Yep. Now Graham is still trying to continue his push up north, but he has no real anti-armor here. Heck, even that 1BA-10 is pretty scary. That's what an SU-85 sitting behind the lines is kind of chilling. Yep, and another one which is going to be flanking around all the way to the far north. And with the recon unit, yeah, he can just snipe enemy reinforcements and that will just shut things down. Absolutely. Heck, even the Vazvedka's gonna start firing. Doesn't kill anything, of course, but at least he can start firing as well. And, okay, yeah. So I guess that's the other thing, too. If they can get the Panzer Shrek, if they get the AV to kind of fall out, that BA-10 is just terrifying. You're absolutely right. I wasn't even thinking about how scary that was with no AV. Yeah. But now it's, it's, it's grenades or it's nothing. Um, but regardless, back to 1311 over here, and Orc starts to get more and more bleed. Hey, this is it's, so much stuff. Yes, well, the funny thing is, I think right now, it's just, there are these, um, laughs basically on, like, ready fives. So whenever we see, like, a Luftwaffe plane come in, yep, we're probably, we might see a dead S-85, maybe. But then we'll see, yep, there we go, but we see a <laughs> little drop in, and that's the second time it's happened. They barely fire, and the thing just explodes in midair. Yeah, they're really good interceptors, man. They go fast, they get in and out, they're lovely. And the town is starting to bleed further and further, and I think now here's the rocket attack to just completely obliterate what's left of this northern push. Oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and, and, Graham, and Graham says, screw it, dude, I'm out, I can't do anything about that. What, a, what an explosive finale, but congratulations to Ort. He will be going on to the finals of this tournament against Reefo now. Uh, and geez, finishing out the 1400 kill differential, so pretty well done there. Um, PE2s, I want to take a look at mine with the PE2s. So three there. Two and two and three. So, from the Soviet perspective, not a lot of standout play, 
but all of them did their duty one way or another. I feel like that at least there's a lot of even trades, if nothing else. Yeah, everyone, you know, does their part for the cause of communism. Exactly. Yeah, everyone's everyone's got to contribute what they can. We well, while Hans over here accidentally killed two SU-85s in the Camarotti of the Machiki. But other than that, not really a whole lot of standout performances. So, not the same piles of corpses that we had seen before in a previous match, but I think at the same time, this is exactly what needed to occur. Yeah, this has been a very interesting, like, finals match I've seen for any such tournament, from Red Storm, Vanilla SD2, because both these matches were extremely defensive. Like, there's no crazy push where the frontline rental crazy Picasso art. It was just slow and steady attrition. And in both games, Ort just had the better attrition deck. I feel like mm -hmm. Graham, if he's playing in these slow defensive playstyles, which is what it seemed like he was going for with just how he was playing, he needs to build with deeper he needs to build deeper with his decks. Needs more C phase cards. Uh just trade a little bit more efficiently overall because yeah i mean the tank the tank advantage for him really screwed him over in that match i feel like felt mm -hmm. like absolutely absolutely um but um certainly interested to see exactly what or has up his sleeves up against over uh, you know captain o'neill here we've definitely seen o'neill have some really really interesting matches throughout this tournament um but i guess any final thoughts here sir i uh, know just Great matches from both sides, and look forward to seeing the finals. Indeed. So, folks, until those finals come on out, um, I guess until that next time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.